Yes, Lord, we offer our hearts to you, our lives to you. We pray, oh God, you'd speak to us through your word this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. I think it sits really well. I'm so glad I sought the Lord for a word tonight, not just uh, thought one up myself. <laughs> Which can happen, can't it? I was seeking God, you know. It took me a while because when, actually, when you're going through a real big trial, it's, it can be more difficult to focus your mind, can't it? And I was just seeking God, and he led me to the book of Joshua. And I want to talk to you about courage this evening, which fits in really well with what God is doing in our lives as he's saying, I want you to build, I want you to go, I want you to serve me, I want you to surrender. I want you to look at the harvest field around you. And if we're going to do that, we're going to need enormous courage. Because it's that, just because we said we'll, we'll surrender, it, that, is, that does not just mean, okay, well, we've surrendered. It's going to be an easy journey now. It isn't. There are going to be trials. And we know that life can be really tough. I want to read to you part of the first chapter of Joshua. It says this in Joshua 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' Moses assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised to Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates or the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Take in this word because it's for us too, as well as Joshua. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. If you were going to always feel God's presence, he would never need to say that, would he? He's saying it because he knows there will be times when we are challenged. And then he goes on to say, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous, very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. He didn't have the NIV, but he had the first, he had a, he had a bit of the law of God. We, we are so much more privileged. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Why does he keep on saying it? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered all the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land that the Lord is giving you for your own. And it's very much in keeping what God is saying to us as individuals and what God is saying to us as a church, that there is much land we are going to take this year if we do what God has told us to do, what God told Joshua to do. You see, this is, passage is not just about Joshua. It's about you and me. I, I love the character of Joshua. One of my favorite. I lo- Have you noticed I love the Old Testament? You, when We've got the both, you see, and they fit together so beautifully. And when you love the old, and if you go to Africa, I think this is probably where I've got it from because I love Ghana. You ask any Ghanaian if they could only have the old or the New Testament, they will always take the old. <laughs> And I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but I I do love the Old Testament because they sit together so well, the whole, because Jesus is all through 
the Old Testament. So this is not just about Joshua. It's about you and it's about me. You see, one of the big downfalls that a lot of us suffer from is we can, sit, we can listen to Steve give a testimony this morning of how God has used him this week, but we don't think it can happen to us because we feel inadequate. And that's, that's, not, that's not correct thinking. Let me remind you today that you are probably someone's hero. Did you know that? We probably need to be better encouraging one another and saying to one another, you know, you're such a blessing to me. Because you are probably, like Joshua is our hero. You are someone's hero. You may be feeling like a failure. But I want to tell you that people are watching you. And no doubt for most of us here, people have seen things. They are very encouraged by your faith. They are very encouraged by your faithfulness that you keep coming, that you come to the prayer meeting week after week. You see, you are still standing, aren't you? Are you? You're still trusting God. You're still praying. You're still concerned about others, even though you've got burdens of your own. So just as an aside, I need to remind you, and I know I say this from time to time, but you need to stop running yourself down. Because it's not just about Joshua, and it's not just about church leadership. It's about us understanding who God has called us to be, and what what he thinks of us. And it fits in with the whole concept of, in Ephesians 4, of making sure we don't let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths. And wholesome talk includes talking ourselves down. God couldn't possibly use me because I'm a bit of a failure. Well, all that has to stop, doesn't it? Because we're going to believe this year that God has called us to serve him. And if he can use Joshua, and if he can use Steve, (laughs) I've got to know him quite well. If he can use Steve... He can use you. Steve won't mind me saying that. We need to start agreeing with God. So one of the ways, and I know I'm not going to talk about this at length because I've done it before and I will do it again, is by learning appropriate scriptures so we've got something else to say when we feel like saying something rubbish. So I'll give you just two. Psalm 17 verse 8 says this. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wing. Do you know you're the apple of his eye? That's what God says. We need to declare it, folks, because that frightens the enemy. When he knows that we know who we are, that really scares him. You are the apple of his eye. So when you're feeling down, you can say, Lord, I confess with my mouth, I am the apple of your eye. Just hide me under the shadow of your wings, Lord. And then one you know already, Psalm 139, I praise you, Lord, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, do you believe it? Some of you don't look sure. But it's true, isn't it? In fact, you can say that to anybody you witness to. Did you know that you're fearfully and wonderfully made? That before even you were born, even though you hate God, he made you and he called you wonderful. What a great testimony that is. So I just want to remind you before we get into Joshua that we need to confess who we are. And believe that God has called us for such a time as this. When the the devil, who is a liar, whispers in your ear, you failed again, you're too old now. Then let's declare. That's why, as a little aside, I can't help but throw this in. I am not a fan of excellence. And that's, that's a key word in many churches these days. I am not a fan of it. I think it's, of course, if you love someone, you're going to do your very best, aren't you? But it's not about excellence. Because God is excellent. 
and he uses, he, he always looks at the heart. And he sees our hearts and he sees we long to serve him and we love him. We don't have to be excellent before we can do anything for God. Well, I can't, I, if I've got to be excellent, then I'll do nothing. I just love him and I want to serve him. So don't worry about excellence. Just give him yourself and get out there and serve him the best you can. God looks at the heart. Do not consider his appearance or his height. God speaks to Samuel when he's looking for a new king, for I've rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And if you keep your heart clean, then it's amazing what will happen. You are of great value to God. It's actually more about perseverance. Because sometimes things are tough, we have to be persevering, don't we? Hebrews says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. So if there's any stuff in your life that you don't need to have, any clutter, get rid of it the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance. It doesn't say let's run with excellence. It says run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. You say to me, well, where where do I get perseverance from? This is the bad news. Perseverance comes through suffering. Oh, dear. Romans says, not only so, but also we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. James says, let perseverance finish its work so you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. So when things are tough, God is actually using that to make you ready for all that he has for you. And that really is how we need to see the suffering that we go through. I've had, my, yeah, I've had a fair share of it this year myself. You know, right now I went to see mum today, this afternoon, and she's not very well at all. She was feeling a lot of pain and just waiting for Jesus to take her home. But I, there's such a presence of God and such a sense of his peace and calmness. And when I leave her every time now, every day this week, before I've gone, I've taken control of what I can take control of, which is the, my attitude and the words I say. And I've stroked her head, did it this afternoon. And I said, sure, and I look in her eyes. I hope sometimes they're open, sometimes they're not. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you, mum, all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love you, mum. And then I go. So they will be the last words I say to her. I'm not sure when it will be, but I'm saying it every time I see her. So I can k- take control of that, can't I? It's not, that it's, it's not that it's easy to do. It's painful to do. When they phoned us at 6 o'clock on Tuesday, 6 o'clock in the morning, to go to the nursing home because she was having seizures, both Lionel and I went weeping. Of course we did. Because it, it seemed as though that might be the last day but we can persevere in God. And, and I know, I already know, as much as it's sad, that God is doing a good work in me. And I will be better for what I've been through. I will be more used to this house. I will be more used to you. I will be a better servant of God. I don't want to be a wimpy Christian. Do you? So let's take a different attitude to our suffering. That God is working in us. As we persevere, God is finishing a work in us and he's making us mature and he's making us complete. It's time to stop listening to the devil. It's time to be courageous. If we're going to have everything God wants us to have this year, we're going to need to be courageous. And Joshua is a story about courage. The word courage appears five times in the first 18 verses of this chapter of the Bible. It, it, it doesn't mean mustering yourself up. 
I will be corrected. It doesn't mean that. In Hebrew, actually it comes from this particular bit, the Latin word for core, meaning heart. It means strength of heart. It's having the strength to do what is right in the face of fear. It's a change of mind too, isn't it? It's the choice of will to keep going, whatever happens. I can, I know that, you know, we can't, people always point to Peter, don't they? And and how big-headed he seemed to have been. I I don't, I can honestly say to you, I'm not stopping. I'm going to go for it this year. I'm going to have all, because it's not about me. It's about me choosing the courage and the strength that comes from him. Surely fear will knock at your door this year. I was looking at some statistics from psychologists. They, they believe that fear is one of the biggest drivers in our lives. Studies have found that fear is often related to our first memories. You know, as a little child getting lost in a shop, or being left alone in the dark. And as we get older, it gets worse. We get this fear of people and what they think of us. And we start to do things because we're afraid of people. We're afraid of failure. And it holds us back from the adventures God has for us. God has adventures for you this year. But you have to do something about the fear that will steal your joy and steal your peace. And that's why I want to talk about courage this evening. Romans 8 says, Christ who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. That alone should remove the fear, shouldn't it? Jesus is praying for me. Jesus is praying for you right now. He's not stopping. He doesn't go to sleep. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? And it is written for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. What can Joshua teach us about courage then? Well, he was a man called by God to follow Moses, to lead his people. He led the Hebrews out, or the Israelites as we know them, out of the wilderness into their promised land, where they'd been wandering for 40 years. The Israelites were afraid. We know that because time and time again, they made the wrong choices in the wilderness when things weren't going the way they wanted them to go. They were afraid to fully commit to God. They were afraid of the people in the promised land, weren't they? Remember when 12 spies went in and only Caleb and Joshua came back with a positive report that they could do this because it was what God had called them to do. And now they're on the edge of the promised land and Joshua is chosen to lead them in. And God speaks to Joshua about having courage. So therefore, we can assume Joshua must have had times when he was afraid. Why else would God say, come on, have courage? It was a very big task God had called him to, to follow on from Moses, who had spoken to Pharaoh, considered a god, and set people free from slavery in Egypt and led the people and saw God face to face and received the Ten Commandments. Big shoes to step in. And now here was a group of former slaves that were supposed to go into this new land and defeat the people who were inhabiting it, who were living, living in fortified walled cities. It was a very big job. Firstly, God reminded Joshua that God himself is the source of our courage. I've already said we do not have to muster courage up. We do not have to say, I'm strong enough to do this. No. No one will be able to stand against you, God said, all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. 
I will never leave you or forsake you. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's nice to have those words at any time, but you particularly need to know them and declare them when things are tough. God has said he will never leave you. He says, don't be discouraged. I will be with you wherever you go. Our focus always needs to be on him. And actually, we need to remember that as we go through this year, don't we? That, you know, our focus is not on the things we're doing. Our focus is not on our success. Our focus is not on whether we're good or bad or who God's brought in who's very ultra-talented or the success we're having, none of that needs to be our focus. Our focus needs to be on him alone. Courage comes when you're aware of God's presence. I'm having courage this week because I'm aware of God's presence in my mum's hospital bedroom. We give in to fear when we focus on the issues don't we? When we focus on what's going wrong, that's when we crumble. And that's when you need to turn your eyes upon Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of your faith. Everything looks scarier when you take your eyes off Jesus and you start to dwell on the problem. And you know what happens when you start to dwell on the problem? You dwell on it more And it gets bigger, and it seems totally impossible, and in the natural, it may well be impossible. You can't make your problems your focus. I don't know what your problems are today, but Jesus would say to you, take your eyes off your problems and put your attention on me. You you know, people get afraid of losing their jobs. One of my friends, actually... One of my dearest friends, she phoned me this week. She said, pray for Paul, my husband. He went to work today. He's a managing director of a whole factory. Massive earning, earnings. Been there for 20-odd years. Got to work. The multi- international director flew in from somewhere and, and said, will you clear your desk, Paul? We don't need you anymore. But I spoke to him a couple of days ago and he's just looking he's just looking to Jesus he's he's working out how he can take an enhanced pension and start working for a charity and do some really exciting things for Jesus because he's taking his focus off the problem which is a big problem and he's put his focus on Jesus And that's what he wants us to do. The fact is, God is not going to forsake you. I'll say it again. God is not going to forsake you. He has promised to be with you. And he wants you to keep your eyes on him. The only fear you have, need to have, is the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, the knowledge that he is mighty, that kind of fear. Romans 8 says, if God is for us, who shall be against us? We have to believe the truth, don't we? The truth sets us free. So first of all, then, our focus needs to be him. Second thing we can learn from Joshua is this. We need to hold fast to him and his word. In this crumbling world where a lot of churches have started to compromise on scripture, I unashamedly say to you this evening that we are called to believe the whole doctrine of God. That this word is his word and it's not up for changing. It's his word. And we need to read it and and believe it. God said to Joshua in verse 7, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. 
then you will be prosperous and successful. I don't care what your ideas are and whether you think everything written here sounds particularly moral in our current generation. This is God's word. And if you meditate on it, drink it, eat it, sleep it, read it, think about it, then you will be blessed. It's what the Bible says. The Bible says you will be blessed. In Hebrew, the word law is Torah, which means teaching and instruction. And this is God's instruction manual to us. And I think probably for many of us today, there is a challenge from the throne of grace in our busy, busy lives. And it's a challenge for me. Steve and I actually mentioned it the other day. I wish we had a bit more time, you know. Well, we're gonna, if we want all that God has for us this year, we're going to have to make a bit more time for him and his word. And I know some of you, because the, because the devil doesn't want you to read it, does he? He'll, he'll do anything to stop you. You've got to get that washing up finished, haven't you? So I'll, I'll perhaps do my reading tomorrow. Leave the washing up. We'll do it a bit earlier. We'll get your husband to do it. There we are. It's a prophecy. <laughs> Read it. Think about it. Talk about it. Remind yourself. Recite it. Learn it. Meditate upon it until it dwells inside of you. It renews your mind. It's living. And it says in Hebrews 4, for the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It's the best counsellor going. I'm not saying we shouldn't go to counsellors at all or have advice from one another. But have we been to the word? Because it's all in here. Psalm 19 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. So if you want to be wise, get into the word. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Do you know, I reckon that means people will see Jesus in us. They'll look in, their, in our eyes and they'll say, wow, you've got something special. The word of God really matters. I encourage you to listen to his instruction and hold fast to him and his word. The third and final thing I want to mention then this evening is this. Joshua reminds us that we are called to obedience. Courage requires us to commit to a vision one step at a time. We do need a vision, don't we? But actually, we need to do what God has called us to do tomorrow. So we need to get up in the morning thinking, what have you got for me today, Lord? How can I serve you today? God has a plan for your life, and it is better and bigger than any plan you could possibly desire for yourself. You already know that. God said to Joshua, I'll give you every place where your foot will stand. The places I promised to Moses. And Joshua did what God asked him to do. The Israelites took hold of God's promises. They went over into the promised land. And one step at a time, they took hold of the land that God had promised them. You see, it doesn't all happen in chapter 1. There's a remaining 23 chapters in the book of Joshua when they lived out and took hold of the promises of God for them. Maybe you have a vision. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you lost it years ago when it didn't seem to be happening. Maybe you've been very discouraged because there are discouraged people here. You wanted to do something great for God. Maybe you wanted to be a missionary or a pastor or your dream just didn't happen. 
lots of you with broken dreams here, I know that. But I want to tell you, it's not too late for you to say, yes, Lord, I want everything you've got for me. And I believe you've got a plan for my life. And we take it one step at a time, which is what Joshua did. A professor of theology was interviewed and he was asked this question, what's the key to following Jesus? And he said, love God with all you've got and then commit to do the right next thing. Do the next thing that God has called you to do. Victories are won in everyday battles. Although you may have a vision, actually it's tomorrow you need to be concerned with. Do you want to be blessed? It's a daft question, isn't it? Psalm 119 says, Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all of their hearts. So Joshua would teach us, God would teach us through Joshua, be courageous by keeping your eyes, focusing on God, not upon the things that are burdening you. Hold fast to God and hold fast to his word. Maybe some of us need to make a fresh commitment to read the word of God. And obey him, do what he tells you to do, one day at a time. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Let's pray. I pray for my brothers and my sisters. I thank you, God, that every one of them is the apple of your eye that you made them, you never made any mistakes, they are wonderfully made. I thank you, you have a plan and a purpose for them, and for not one person here is it too late to begin to say, yes, Lord, take me, use me for your glory. I pray, oh God, you, as they focus on you, as we all lift our eyes to the hills where our strength comes from, our strength comes from the Lord, Lord, that as we keep our eyes on you, you would fill us with courage and you would help us to persevere, particularly, Lord, when things are tough and we just have to keep going and declaring the goodness of God. Lord, would you fill my brothers and sisters with courage, with your word. Help us, Lord, to love your word and help us to be obedient to what you have for us tomorrow. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.